Howdy guys, Kevin Kellogg here. I'm out from a morning walk with Lucy. Um, and I want to take some stops along the way to talk about trolling strategy. I want to talk about how to catch rainbow trout. And I want to talk about how to catch landlocked kings. And right out of the box, I want to say I am offering guided instructional fishing trips on Folsom Reservoir. If you want to book one, get on up to fishhuntshoot.com. Check out the guide calendar. Book your spot. I will take years off the learning curve as it pertains to consistently catching fish at Folsom Lake. And uh, this should be a clue as to what I'm going to talk about. I am going to talk about Folsom Lake. Now, I know I got people watching this all over the world. You can apply these ideas to your local reservoir, but I'm going to talk about Folsom Reservoir because it's our local reservoir here in the Sacramento area. And it is a lake that confounds a whole bunch of anglers. A whole lot of anglers go out there and consistently catch nothing rather than going out there and consistently catching trout and salmon. And there's a couple major reasons for that, okay? First, they're not considering the lake and they're not considering the, the lake as a fishery. We'll talk more about that in a second. But the other big factor in their failure to consistently find and catch fish stems from the fact that most of the guys that fish Folsom Lake are playing follow the leader, okay? They know a guy who knows a guy whose cousin went out to the lake and pulled a speedy shiner in the main body at 47 feet deep off his downrigger and he caught a beautiful four pound rainbow. And, you know, they were online last year and they saw a guy that said he was pulling a speedy shiner out in front of the dam at 62 feet. And he caught a absolutely stunning nine pound king salmon out there. So when they take their boat out to the lake, they look around, they say, this is a big, deep body of water. I'm completely intimidated by it. And they don't actually say that, but that's what they're thinking. And they say, well, I'm going to do what those other two guys did. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to pull speedy shiners down deep on my downriggers. And I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. And I'm going to hope something hits. And every once in a while, something does hit. But most of the time, fish don't hit. And they walk away from the lake saying, man, this lake stinks. And I hate it here. Now, I'm not going to say I don't struggle at Folsom Lake too. It's a very challenging fishery. But it's full of really nice fish and I struggle a whole lot less than the majority of guys that fish the lake and it's because I don't play the follow the leader game I don't care what the man who met the man who met Andy Griffin is pulling I could care less I don't care what other guides are pulling I'm worried about myself I don't want to catch other people's fish I spend time studying the lake I spend time studying the lake as a fishery and then I apply my fishing strategy to the lake, okay? I saw a post oh, a couple weeks ago, a guy had a picture of a small rainbow, and he says, man, this is online, I think I caught a kokanee at Folsom Lake. You know what I know about that guy? It's, I'm not knocking you. If you just wanna go out to the lake and pull a lure around and have a good time and maybe catch a fish, that's fantastic. There are no kokanee in Folsom Lake. And by putting that post up, I know that that guy took zero time studying the fishery. He doesn't know the first thing about the lake. He doesn't even know what fish species are in the lake. He doesn't know what he's catching, okay? To catch fish at a challenging lake, you've got to know what's going on out there. Let's think about Folsom Lake from a physical standpoint. It's a very large reservoir. It's a very deep reservoir. And right now, it's completely full, so it's even bigger and deeper than usual. We have an extensive main body with lots of structure, lots of deep water, at times lots of current out there in that main body. And we have two large river arms that are, you know, lakes unto themselves. So there's a lot to consider when you look at the lake. If you go out there with the idea of fishing the entire lake, you're gonna fail. If you go out there with the idea of only fishing in front of the dam, you're gonna fail. Okay, last year at this time, the king salmon fishing was outstanding out in front of the dam at Folsom Lake. But this is a different year. Those kings, they may show up later. They're not there right now. Maybe they're not in the lake. I don't know. But I know it is fishing very differently from how it was fishing 
last summer, okay? So there's a lot of water to look at. Number one challenge, you've got to cut the lake down to size. Number two challenge, you've got to understand what goes on out there. There are two main forage fish in Folsom Lake. There are threadfin shad, there are pond smelt. Pond smelt are long and skinny, shad are broader in the body. Given a choice, Folsom's trout and kings will target the pond smelt over the shad. So that's a clue about what presentations you should be running. Notice now I'm just getting to presentations. We haven't talked about lures yet at all. Speedy shiners are the number one lure at Folsom Lake, according to a lot of guys, and they are a fine lure. And there are times when you can mop the fish up with them. Same goes for my speed spoons, same goes for a Rapala. But a lot of times out at Folsom, those are not the best lures to pull. Sometimes if you pull those lures, you'll get skunked when if you would change things up, you would have an outstanding day. So I'm gonna walk a little more and then we're gonna get into how to find fish at Folsom and how to refine your presentations to consistently catch fish and make the most of the groups of fish that you do find. I'll be right back at you. Okay. Let's consider the game fish species that cold water trollers are interested in targeting out at Folsom Lake. Um, there's, there's two primary species out there. There's king salmon and there's rainbow trout. Let's talk about the kings first. The king salmon population out there fluctuates. It goes up and down. Historically, the most consistent place to catch kings on the lake has been in the lower ends of the arms and in the main body. Now, that cuts the lake down some, but not a ton because that's a really big area. Um, I found the kings out in open water over the channels more often, but I've also found them holding tight to structure at times. So that's a factor. Just because you know the general area of the lake, you don't know the little kind of micro environments where the fish like to hold or where they may be holding, okay? So that's kind of the deal on kings. Some of the best kings at the lake are caught by black bass anglers spooning structure. So that just shows you that those kings can be very tight to those big bluff points, those, those long, you know, sloping points that go into the lake and any other kind of structure you find out there. Um, if you're out there looking for kings, you need to check out the deep water over the channels, but you need to be flexible enough to get inshore and maybe find those fish if the if they've moved up on structure or if the, the, the small percentage of the salmon in the lake that are feeding have moved up onto structure. So that's something to think about if you wanna go out there and target the salmon, okay? Rainbows. There are three specific types of rainbows in the lake. There's fresh planters, there's holdovers that were planted in the lake at some point in the past, but have dialed into the natural ecosystem. Essentially, they're wild fish. And there are 100% naturally spawned wild rainbows in the lake. And there's a lot more of them than you think there are. And uh, I'll illustrate this with a little story. I was out, this is 20 plus years ago, I was out fly fishing for bass in May. There's some top water action going on. I was on the North Fork. I was fishing off the bank. And there's a little creek that flows in above Rattlesnake Bar. And uh, I was crossing the bridge and I thought to myself, man, this, this looks like a good spot for some trout. So I put on a dry fly and I proceeded to catch, you know, little three inch trout after three inch trout. And I was like, man, this, is, this little creek is full of trout. And then it dawned on me. They were trout, but what they really were was steelhead. And what I'd really discovered was one of the micro environments driving the fishery at the lake. What's going on there is rainbows from the lake are moving into that creek, they're spawning, and then the fish that they spawn are reaching some level of maturity in that creek, and then they're going out to the lake. Now between the creek and the lake, there's probably an eighth of a mile of that creek that's very slew-like, very slow, very deep. That's the estuary. So. Essentially what I was looking at is I was looking at a steelhead stream connected to an estuary connected to the quote unquote ocean that Folsom Lake represents. Fish are spawned in the stream, they mature, they go out into the lake, they feed on bait fish, they come back to the stream, they reproduce, 
and the cycle is repeated. So there are a lot more wild rainbows in Folsom than you think there are. Also, the river arms at Folsom, the South Fork and the North Fork of the American are very productive in terms of forage. Um, a lot of times, and this goes for bass too, a lot of times a big percentage of the fish in the lake move out of the lake and move into the actual rivers to feed. That's another factor. Sometimes the fish that you're trying to catch just plain are not in the lake at any given time, or at least the biggest number of them are not in the lake at any given time. So you got to realize that the fish at Folsom move around a lot and you also need to choose what you want to target. Yes, you can catch a king salmon by accident when trolling for rainbows and you can catch a rainbow by accident when targeting kings. But if you want the best results, you need to choose, am I fishing for rainbows or am I fishing for kings, okay? Because the approaches are, are pretty different. They're very different for me. Um, I catch my share of kings out there, but I am a dyed in the wool rainbow trout junkie. And I like to chase those rainbows around the lake. Um, we've been very successful getting them for the last month. And you know how many fish we've caught speed trolling spoons? Um, very few. I just want to say one or two. We're still power trolling out there, but we're power trolling with our soft plastics because they just aren't responding to the metal. And the other factor out there is that the rainbows, they will orient to one or two coves. You've got to do a lot of exploring. Once you find the fish, then you can start cutting the lake down to size. So here's your basic strategy at Folsom. You want to cover ground fast with a variety of lures and you want to work the water column. Don't get in that rut because you're over 180 feet of water that you need to run your baits down 60, 70 feet on the downrigger. Sometimes that is the answer to the problem. A lot of the times it's not. Our fish right now, they're pretty much scattered from eight to 25 feet deep. That's as deep as we're fishing. Some of the fish we're catching are out over open water. They're out over the channel, but most of the rainbow trout we're catching are orienting to structure in the backs of coves, not on points, not out over the main river channel. They're orienting to structure on steep banks in the backs of coves, okay? I don't know why, but we located the fish and we've been consistently catching some really nice wild rainbows out there. Um, so. The key strategy is to start out fast, start out with a variety of baits, find the fish. At this point, you're really not fishing. You're fishing, but you're not fishing. You're scouting for an area where you can really start to dial in the bite. Once you get hit, once you find the favorable marks, start grinding on that area and start refining your presentation, okay? Right now, we can catch fish on Trout Tricks Worms. It's not the best offering. We're not catching much on spoons, but if we put a trigger minnow in the water, we're doing very well. Key speed, way faster than I typically pull plastics, anywhere from two and a half to three miles an hour. That's working, and we, we stumbled on this pattern by first finding the fish and then starting to make subtle changes. Don't make these big global changes in your presentation once you find fish. Grind on the area, cut the lake down to size. Be aware of what the forage is out there. That trigger minnow, it looks like a pond smelt. It is a dead ringer for a pond smelt. I have flies that are also dead ringers for pond smelt, but the fish aren't responding to them right now. Don't be the guy at Folsom Lake or any other reservoir that falls into the rut of following the leader. Most guys at Folsom Lake, they either pull a threaded worm, a speedy shiner, or a hoochie behind a big blade with a piece of anchovy on it for kings. There's a lot more going on out there than three presentations. I've had outstanding fly trolling out there. I've had outstanding rainbow trolling way up in the North Fork in the fall on little tiny spoons when the fish are busting on bait. So you want to get out there, you want to scout, you want to find fish, then grind on those key areas and refine your presentation. Forget about what, you know, Joe Blow's pulling out there. You need speedy shiners, but you also need soft plastics and you also need flies and you need to, you know, deploy them in a systematic way that allows you to exploit the bites that you find 
to the maximum. The way you catch big fish at Folsom is catching a lot of fish. And the way you catch a lot of fish out there is paying attention to the basics, understanding the lake, understanding that the fish move around, find the fish, refine the bite, and that's how you're gonna maximize your success.